Okay, I've got uh, my board layout printed out on regular bond paper here um, with my laser printer. Now, because this transfer paper is um, expensive and I don't want to print a whole sheet of it just to get this small circuit, I'm going to cut this to size and tape it on to the um, tape it onto the sheet where it will be printed and run it through the printer a second time and the side that on this transfer paper the side you want to print on is the light blue glossy side. The, the paper has two sides. It's a lighter blue glossy side and a darker blue matte finish side. You want to print on the glossy side, the lighter blue glossy side. So I'm just going to position that over the print so that it will completely get covered and find my masking tape. I'll just use some scotch tape. Typically I would use um, a laser label to do this because that adhesive will stand up to the heat and that label will stand up to the heat of running through the laser printer but I don't have a laser label right now so I will go run this back through the printer and I will be right back okay so I got my um, my board layout printed on my transfer paper again it's printed on the shiny light blue side not the darker blue matte side and I got a nice clean piece of copper clad that I'm going to put this circuit on. Um, I cleaned this by using a piece of scotch brite like this and some soap and water and scrubbed it for several minutes. Um, you don't have to push hard while you're scrubbing but you do have to cover the entire surface um, from several different directions and um, repeatedly and like I said for several minutes uh, to make sure you get all of the oxidation off of the surface. Um, without this being real clean the toner will not stick to it so um, make sure that's real clean. Then rinse it with uh, fresh water and dry it with a clean paper towel and then I rinse it with um, rubbing alcohol and before that rubbing alcohol has a chance to evaporate I again with another clean paper towel rub it up, wipe it off good to make sure you get all the residue off of there um, and then don't touch the surface handle it only by the edges um, next piece of equipment that's vital is a laminator um, you can do this using an iron, um, but I find a laminator gives much better, more consistent results. Um, this is just a small 8.5 by 11 personal laminator. Um, it has a 3 mil and a 5 mil laminator setting. I've got it set to the high setting and um, I plug it in and let it heat up for about a half an hour before I use it um, to transfer toner. Um, and this ready light will come on long before that half hour is up, but I let it continue to heat up even after the ready light comes on um, to make sure it's good and hot. So we'll wait for that to happen and we'll come back and laminate it. Okay, 
we're back. The laminator is all heated up, and we're going to run the um, the circuit print and the uh, copper clad through the laminator to transfer the toner. Um, oh, I forgot one thing. I got to go get some water because we got to transfer that. I'll be right back. Okay, now I got my container of water because it's got to go. The lamination's got to go in there as soon as it comes out of the laminator um, while it's still hot. Okay, so we take the circuit print and our nice clean copper clad and put them down together. Now, when you use a laminator like this, you typically put a sleeve over the document that you're laminating and the laminating film but um, this is 032 um, fiberglass copper clad and it is thick enough that you don't need to use the sleeve um, if you're using a flexible thinner flexible printed circuit board you probably should use the sleeve over it but use this Feed it in. And it comes out the other end. And it will be hot when it comes out. And you turn it around and go the other direction and feed it in again. And as soon as it comes out of the second time, it goes into the water. Now that um, transfer paper soaks up that water pretty good. And in a minute or two, the, um, the glossy side of that paper has got a cellulose coating on it. And that cellulose coating will dissolve in the water and completely release the toner and um, this paper will slide off like a water slide decal and leave 100% of the toner on the paper. We'll leave that in there for a minute. It's not quite there yet. This is a pretty good size board to do with this technique. One of the bigger ones I've ever done. So, it may take a few more minutes. There, you can see it's, le it's released now. And there it is. You can see that the toner is completely gone off the paper. and it is completely transferred to the copper. All right. I don't have uh I do have paper towels in here. So. Just get some paper towels. And carefully blot this dry. You don't have to be real careful with this. It's um, it's stuck on there pretty good, but don't scrub it to dry it off. Okay, now the second step in this process is this green film, and it has a two different sides. There's a very glossy side 
and a very matte finish side. And you take the very matte finish side and put it against your circuit print. Again, the matte finish side against, against your circuit print. And make it a little bit long so it folds under. And then feed that through the laminator as well. And kind of drag your fingers out here to keep the wrinkles out of it. And because this is folded, don't flip it around this time, but just run it through the same way the second time. And what happens is this film, the coating on this film, only adheres to the toner. So when you peel this off and do this while it's still hot, it coats the toner with another layer of resist and makes it that much more dense and eliminates pinholes and um, other defects that you typically get with toner transfer method. This board is ready to etch now. So uh, I'll set up for etching and I'll be back. Okay, to do my etching I use ferric chloride, but um, I use a wiping method. So I use very little of the liquid itself. I'm only going to pour out a couple ounces of ferric chloride and although that's a fairly large container like I said I'm only going to pour out a couple ounces of liquid and um, there's my board with the resist on it ready to go and I'm just going to take a foam brush and I'm going to start wiping this board Now this has got half ounce copper on it, so it etches pretty rapidly. And um, I would expect that this board will be etched through in about three minutes or so using this wiping method. And um, although this is a single sided board. I didn't have any single sided. All I have is double sided copper clad so I'm going to completely etch off the back side too or the top side of the board. So nice even strokes. Good even coverage of the board. And what you're doing is wiping off the the etchant that's done that's done its job and um, replacing it with fresh etchant and you can tell the etchant that's done its job because it's turned black and then after a couple of times over the board I will go and get some fresh etchant out of what I poured out now if I'm doing a smaller board or um, I don't have to etch both sides at the same time like this, I will use a piece of sponge instead of this brush and um, only pour out enough etchant to keep the sponge wet and um, 
It takes a little bit longer to etch that way, but it really cuts down on the environmental impact and, and the cost of the etching. Now you can see the it's starting to etch through in the center of the board. Using this wiping method I can um, I can typically etch a two-sided board a fully you know two-sided traces on both sides of the board fully two-sided board in a couple of hours okay I'm going to switch over to the other side here and do some etching on the other side now so I can keep track of how well the etching is going it's a lot easier to see the etching finish when you can see through the fiberglass you can see how dark this etchant is getting it's uh, it's working hard well that took a lot longer to etch than I thought it would it, um, but it is completely etched now. You can see that the copper is completely gone on both sides. Um, copper here on the corners don't matter. I'm going to trim it to this circle anyway. So um, the on the last step to do for this board is to trim it to shape. Um, I'll probably use some aviation snips to trim it rough and then sand it to shape on a belt sander and then um, use um, you can use just about any solvent to take this off some work better than others acetone will take it right off without any effort at all um, I don't have any acetone and don't like to use anything that nasty and aggressive so I use like turpentine and um, use a little more elbow grease and that will take it off and leave you with nice bright copper traces um, the turpentine or the acetone or whatever you choose to use to take that off we'll take both the green um, film layer and the black toner off dissolve them both and take them off and leave you with bright copper brace traces and then it's um, for through hole parts like this board uses uh, it's drill them out and um, insert them from the top and solder them on and there you have it so that's it here's my new board all built up and running some test code on my Arduino.